Yep, yeah, we're back! And while we've got 99 endgame problems and Iron Man ain't won, today's focus is on the god of mischief himself, Loki. Of Asgard. Truthfully, after his death at the hands of Thanos in Infinity War, we should be happy to even see Loki in the movie at all. But now that we did, there's a whole slew of new problems to deal with. Loki's small scenes during the time-traveling exploits in Endgame have some pretty big implications, but do they actually all work for the story the movie was supposed to tell? Spoiler alert! Not really. So let's break things down. And if you're not agreeing with us, just a quick tap from Loki's scepter will help you understand exactly where we're coming from. While we waited and wondered the fate of many heroes after Thanos snapped his fingers in Infinity War, there was one character he promised wasn't coming back. Loki. No resurrections this time. Here's a quick recap. Loki dies. Yeah, we're not into the nitty gritty. Thor cried, we cried, and here we are. We all still had hope of seeing Loki once again in Endgame. And then months before the movie gets released, Marvel Studios drops a bombshell on us. Loki's getting his own TV series. While details are scarce, it definitely got the rumor mill churning. Could it be a prequel? A sitcom co-starring Matt Damon and focusing on the everyday hijinks put together Asgard stage productions. Build a statue for me. We will build a big statue for you. Would Loki be resurrected in Endgame thanks to the Infinity Gauntlet? While none of those were true, Endgame gave some major hints at what's to come, so let's dive right in. The Avengers are back! Broken, desperate, and five years after the decimation, they finally have a plan thanks to Ant-Man. Gather all the Infinity Stones in the past, snap some fingers, and jam along with everyone who was brought back from the snap. Woohoo! Well, one of the main spots these time-traveling bandits decided to visit was New York City during the epic final battle in 2012's Avengers. Captain America, Iron Man, Ant-Man, and Hulk all descended on the city, hoping to easily capture the Time Stone, the Tesseract with the Space Stone, and Loki's Scepter with the Mind Stone. Long story short, an angry Hulk can slide down buildings and stomp over cars, but gets extremely frustrated when he has to use the stairs instead of the elevator. As he smashes through a door, he knocks down the 2023 Tony Stark, causes the Tesseract to slide across the floor, and Loki uses the Space Stone to get the heck out of Dodge. And then he's gone from the movie. Captain America and Iron Man kind of shrug, hop back to 1970, and Loki's free to go. Bye bye We were all like, what? And before we could even process where Loki went, Iron Man died. We were all in tears and the credits rolled. Only after about hour three of lying in bed and processing everything we saw did it hit us. Ding ding. The endgame Loki scenes were the perfect setup for Loki's television show. Disney Plus is getting ready to launch later this year, and they need some serious star power to compete with other services like Netflix and Amazon Prime. We imagine the live-action adaptation of Lady and the Tramp won't be enough to woo streamers over. The details aren't fully available yet, but in most likelihood, Loki's show will be some form of a miniseries, tying up his story in Endgame and taking him on some new adventures with various deep-cut characters from the world of Marvel Comics. The God of Mischief was off and running with the powerful Space Stone, unable to answer for his action in the Avengers, throwing everything for a loop. And this is where the first problem comes in. The alternate timelines. With so much focus on old man Captain America showing up on the greatest lakeside bench we've ever seen, there's an even bigger timeline problem with Loki's Space Stone disappearance. By getting away at the end of 2012, the rest of Loki's story effectively doesn't happen in the MCU. No death in Thor The Dark World, no resurrection in Thor Ragnarok, and no confrontation with Thanos in Avengers Infinity War. So Loki basically created his own new timeline, and a complicated one at that. Loki cannot only teleport wherever he chooses, but he can use the Space Stone to travel to multiple dimensions as well. This means the timeline our Avengers went to is essentially missing an Infinity Stone. When Captain America went to return the stones, the Space Stone he had was from the 1970s, meaning the one from years later was still missing. And if we read the Ancient One's nifty exposition timeline animation correctly, then there will be a whole lot of darkness inserted into the timeline these Avengers visited. They didn't even bother to return the stone or tell Thor his brother could be alive in an alternate universe. The stone is effectively out of the timeline, creating all types of branches. And with its interdimensional powers, who knows what kind of chaos it's going to create. So not only do we have some major timeline issues, but the setup of Loki's show itself comes with multiple problems. The first is the emotional impact of Infinity War. Loki's show probably isn't a prequel based on this setup. So the gauntlet chokehold that makes his eyes pop out doesn't feel as impactful. And boy, was that scene pretty crazy to see in IMAX. 
Now that we think about it, almost all of Infinity War kind of feels that way. Gamora's back now, kind of. She follows the same type of timeline transplant story as Loki. Vision will eventually be back on his own Disney Plus show with the Scarlet Witch. Even Spider-Man's dusting is kind of like, eh, now, because the Web Slinger is back in action as well. So Loki is back, and the Space Stone will allow his adventures to continue. But at the same time, it just doesn't feel like the same Loki we know and love. Well, maybe you're not so bad after all, brother. Maybe not. The Loki we saw escape is the 2012 Loki. The one who worked alongside Thanos, took over New York City, caused Hawkeye to get all evil and stuff, and still had devious plans despite getting caught. After the Avengers, Loki's character in the MCU timeline we saw changed dramatically, and this is the Loki we want back. Sure, he's still a trickster by the time Infinity War rolls around, but he's a lovable trickster. He helped Thor on numerous occasions, tickled up a whole bunch of laughs, and had several memorable lines. Who can forget when Loki told Thanos, We have a Hulk. What a payoff from the original Avengers, huh? We have a Hulk. Sure, the line was funny, but also represented how Loki has fully evolved to the side of the heroes. We've already seen him evolve, so unless the pilot of the show showcases a whole new journey-packed montage to the Allie Brooks song Low Key, it's going to be a while before he returns to the form he once was. And while heroes should always have their flaws, this isn't something we want to see all over again. His journey is already there. It's perfectly done, and having an alternate version feels like a little bit of an overkill. So, the Loki from Endgame is pretty much still in villain mode, with Thor probably not in the picture for the series. Who's going to be the one to set him straight on his course? Will he interact with Thanos? Maybe start his own romantic relationship with Jane Foster like he promised in the first Thor? Time will tell, but the series does have a huge character arc to get through from the start without feeling too repetitive. And don't get us wrong, Loki has been entertaining both as a villain and a semi-hero, but we don't want to feel like we're taking a step backwards here. So yeah, we were able to analyze all this from about two minutes of film time, and that brings us back to his endgame role again. While it was great to see Loki in the movie, we barely got to hear Loki in that movie. Known for his dialogue, quick wit, and the ability to clap back at even the greatest of foes, Loki was oddly too quiet in this film. You had one job. One of the main lines he actually said was a quote from the original Avengers, just seen from the perspective of 2023's Tony Stark and Scott Lang. I'll have that drink now. When Loki did get another line, it was actually Chris Evans delivering the line, because Loki transformed into Captain America as a nice nod to the time he did that in Thor The Dark World. Side note, with the amount of times Loki is transformed into Steve Rogers, we have to wonder if he's a fan of America's rear as much as Ant-Man is. Thor slaps a device on Loki's face to cover his mouth and keep him quiet. Loki only uses facial expressions for the rest of the scene, until he flashes off through space, taking some great possible one-liners with him. When Rocket and Thor glide past his jail cell on Asgard, we still get no quotes, no quips, or even some fun humming. Just another silent Loki. Maybe it had to do with budget reasons and royalties, but the amount of silent characters in Endgame stands out with Loki being near the top of the list. But the guy is a big talker. Even Nick Fury got a dramatic stare. What's a Samuel L. Jackson movie without hearing the man talk? Well, it actually would have been pretty amazing if they flashed back to his resurrection right after the snap as he uttered, Ucker! That would have just been, it would have just been the best. As fun as a Loki show will be, and how much we love the character, we can't help but wonder if he should have just stayed dead. The flashbacks would have been a nice homage, but disappearing, creating his own timeline, and lessening the impact of his Infinity War death may have been a bit too much. Marvel wants to milk as much out of these characters as possible, but the amount of reverse deaths or time travel loopholes is getting a little out of hand, and can become a major problem in the future. While we may shrug it off here and ignore it for the thrill of an entertaining Loki show, the problem could build in the future, and this is why we have a problem with Loki in Endgame. And now it's your turn to chime in! Did you have any problems with Loki in Avengers Endgame? Was there anything we missed? Should it have been old man Loki on that bench handing his horned helmet off to someone special? Don't get us wrong, we love Endgame and the culmination of the whole first three phases of the MCU, but there were definitely some glaring problems the more we analyzed the movie. So, here we go. Leave your comments, Hulk smash that like button, and even do a thumbs up in person! It's fun! Go ahead, tell us what other problem videos we should focus on, or anything else related to Endgame. And uh, now we're gonna go see the movie again. Oh, and, uh, and one more thing, do not forget to subscribe to Screen Rant for more great Marvel content. Thanks for watching.